Hello, hello! I'm Sasha and I'm so glad to see you again on another episode of Pearl English. First, let's check out our grammar item for today and it's prepositions. Words like on, under, through, across and from are all called prepositions. They are usually placed before a noun or a pronoun in a sentence. The cat is sitting on the table. In this sentence, the preposition on is placed before the noun, the table. Actually, the table is a noun phrase, but it functions as a noun in this sentence. Please get the book from him. Here, the preposition from is put before the pronoun him. A preposition can be a single word or two or more words. Here's an example of a single word preposition. In. The dragon is sleeping in the cave. Here's an example of a two word preposition. Away from. The dog ran away from his master. And here's an example of a three-word preposition. In front of. Susila sits in front of Jenna in the classroom. Let's zero in on two types of prepositions. That is, prepositions of place and prepositions of movement. Prepositions of place tell us where someone or something is. They are also put in a particular place in a sentence. And where's that? Well, we usually put them after the verb. Here's an example. He hung the welcome sign above the door. The preposition in the sentence is above. Notice that it comes after the verb hung. Okay, here are a few common prepositions of place and their meanings. Under, below, behind, against. And what about prepositions of movement? Are you ready to learn some of them? Good, let's get going. Prepositions of movement tell us that there has been a change in someone or something's position. These prepositions also always follow a verb. Here's an example. The boys are walking towards the river. In this sentence, the verb are walking is followed by the preposition towards, which shows movement. Okay. Here are a few common prepositions of movement and their meanings. Across, through, into, out of. Tell you what, why don't we do another type of preposition? The preposition of time. And some of our friends are here to help us understand how to use it. Okay, it's Mrs. T's birthday next week and I suggest that we buy her a card and a mark that says the best teacher in the world. Yes, that's a good suggestion. Her birthday is at Friday, right? Huh? At? You mean on Friday? Oh, sorry, on Friday. Uh, by the way, on what time are we going shopping today? Huh? On? You mean at what time? Yes, yes, at what time? Hmm. We will meet at my house at 3 p.m. and my mom will drive us to town. Awesome. I will be there after 3 p.m. After? Uh, sorry, I mean before 3 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> we use prepositions of time to say when something happens. And that's what our three friends were doing in the video that you just watched. Here are some stills from that video. Poor Ujang, he used the wrong preposition of time. But Safira corrected him and told him that it should be on. 
For days of the week, including special days and dates, we use on, not at. Hmm, on what time? Poor Ujang, he got his prepositions crossed again. He should have used at. At what time? Here's the rule. Use at when you are referring to exact points in time. At noon, at 5 p.m., at midnight. Our friend Ujang also used another wrong preposition of time. He used after instead of before. Had he actually gone to Alvin's house after 3 p.m., he would have missed them. Hmm. I hope Ujang will brush up on his prepositions of time. Let's learn names of some tools and objects that are used by people for their work. Handcuffs. A police officer uses handcuffs to restrain criminals when they are arrested. It is a ring-shaped metal object that can be locked around a person's wrist. Whistle. A referee uses a whistle to start, stop or restart a football game. Gavel. A judge uses a small wooden hammer called a gavel to call people to attention and to seal a decision made by the court. Chisel. A carpenter uses a chisel to cut and shape wood and stone. It is typically a long metal blade with a sharp edge at the end of it. The poem that we are going to look at and interpret today is called A Fighter's Lines by a Malaysian poet named Marzuki Ali. To refresh your memory, a poem is a piece of creative writing that is so full of expressions of feelings and ideas. It usually has its own unique rhythm, rhyme and imagery. Poems are usually arranged in a series of lines that can be separated into groups called verses or stanzas. Let's listen to it. A Fighter's Lines I am old and worn and have lost all my strength sufferings. And the history of the fight for independence have forced sacrifices that know no name or life. From the wheelchair of the rest of my days, I, body and energy, crush sea and cannot do much. These times are too big a challenge for the remnants of my crippled years. The net of deceit spread everywhere disturbs me. In the name of justice, wake up and form ranks, sons of our ancestor. Be brave and erect the wall of people. Stand up, heirs of our freedom. I have no more voice. It is you now who should speak. Now that's an awesome poem with a call to be patriotic and to stand up for freedom. Okay, there's a lot that can be read between the lines of this poem. So, let's carry on and look at the tone and mood of the poem. Ready? When we talk about the tone and the mood in a poem, we refer to the poet's feelings and attitude towards the issue that he is highlighting. In this poem, the tone reflects the voice of someone who is tired and troubled and somewhat frustrated. We also get the feeling that he's very much alone and very disappointed as well. This comes through clearly in the first and second stanza, when he says that he is advanced in age and has lost all his energy. He also makes reference to his disability and mentions that he uses a wheelchair. The first stanza has a very reflective mood. The poet looks back on the past. He reflects on the days gone by and also on his role and sacrifices in the fight for independence. When we put it all together, we can see that the poem has a very serious tone to it. 
This is evident in the way the poet talks about the country being tangled in a web of lies and deceit. Urgency is another tone that we can pick up in the voice of the persona. There is something that needs a quick response. And what is it? That's right. It's this urgent call to the younger generation that he has tagged as the heirs of our freedom to be brave and to stand up and fight for justice and truth in the country. The poem ends on a hopeful note. In the last stanza, the poet says that he has no more voice and exhorts the young people of today to be his voice, to speak up and take action to make the country a better place for everyone. He is confident that young Malaysians will rise up to the challenge. Well, my young friends, all you heirs of our freedom, are you brave enough to take up the challenge posed by Mazuki Ali? Will you do what's right? Will you fight to preserve the freedom that we now enjoy? I know you will. So, do keep reading the poems that you can join in our next discussion on it, okay? Take care and have a great day. Bye!